Tom, you got a, a buy rating, $62 price target. It was interesting to see the upside on the bottom line, you know, a nice EBITDA beat. Uh, but they also talked about how they're kind of doing less on the incentive side for drivers. Are they getting the mix right now? Or is this just about improving macro conditions? Yeah, uh, first off, th thanks for having me. Yeah, you know, look, the, the quarter was was really nice. Um, solid upside uh, on both the top and bottom line and, and specifically in both the mobility segment and the delivery segment. Uh, the first quarter guidance was also very strong and, and positive, um, you know, particularly on, on EBITDA. Uh, this, you know, if, if they put up the number in the first quarter that we think they can, it will be the seventh straight quarter where Uber has been able to show sequential improvement in, in EBITDA dollars. Um, and, you know, there, I think that's really kind of the, the super high level takeaway from the quarter is that these guys are, are really executing on, on certainly on, on, on revenues and monetization, but particularly on, on kind of costs and efficiencies, um, you know, so much so that they also gave the street, um, you know, a new kind of profitability uh, milestone or objective to focus on this year. Uh, which is which is gap operating profit. You know, that's that's after depreciation as amortization, after stock based comp. So, you know, a, yeah. a real sort of <laughs> high quality profit metric, um, you know, relative to what they've shown so far, uh, you know, in terms of positive EBITDA. Oh, Tom, for so many years, we got hung up on EBITDA when it came to Uber and Lyft. You're saying now, forget about it. We're back to gap. Interesting. Um, Koshrasahi is saying the company. Uh, taking market share. Do you believe him? Yeah, look, it would appear that, that that's what's happening uh, in in mobility uh, and maybe even in, in delivery, too. You know, I think the mobility business grew something like 37 percent uh, FX neutral in, in the quarter. Um, you know, we'll see what uh, Lyft puts up in terms of their growth rate when they report here shortly. But, uh, you know, we're forecasting, I think, something close to 20 percent growth in, in Lyft's business. Obviously, it's a little bit apples to oranges because Uber's got an international presence in in, in mobility. But it would appear that uh, you know they are gaining some category share in in mobility. And then on the delivery side, again, you know Uber's uh, geographically kind of far flung in terms of its delivery business. Uh, but you know that accelerated uh, the year over year growth rate accelerated in the fourth quarter, uh, up about 100 basis points to 14 percent mm. growth. Um, and uh, you know all the underlying KPIs for that business were strong too. So. It looks like they're, they're probably taking a category share kind of in both of those uh, segments. Talk to us about your price target, because it is 62. That's well off where we are today, but it is actually where basically the price topped out at back in 2021. What takes us there? Is it the here, the now, the macro, the reality? Or do we have to go back to the big sky thinking, the autonomous vehicles and the like? Yeah, look, it's it's a little bit of both. Uh, not to cop out on, on the on the question there, but you know, when we look at Uber, what we see is a a large uh, local commerce online marketplace business that is has established you know clear category leadership in in the mobility product and that core mobility product, and you know, on its way to you know a long term kind of competitive strength in in delivery as well and you know, generally speaking online marketplace businesses once they achieve scale and, and and hopefully category leadership you know they can be highly profitable businesses you know uh ebitda margins you know well into the teens and and, and potentially higher so you know the 62 dollar target i think gives them you know maybe a little bit advanced credit yeah. on kind of on on getting there um but on a, on a revenue multiple, you know, it's only three and a half times next year's, uh, this year's revenues, I should say. You know, not, um, you know, not uh, horribly aggressive, we don't think. Bring us back to reality of regulatory issues, too. How much of a concern are they? How much is there an overhang for this year? Yeah, look, it's, it's, it's always a concern. Um, you know, I, I think generally speaking, um, uh, you know, the risk is that, uh, you know, that, it, that it's going to increase uh, costs borne by Uber and therefore Uber is going to have to get more and more creative about how it um, passes those costs on to consumers in, in, the, in the form of uh, higher prices. So far, when we look at markets or cities where there's been um, higher costs or, or sort of a regulatory burden that's resulted in, in higher fees or surcharges, we haven't really seen much of a, a detectable negative impact on the business. 
you know that that won't last for you know that, that won't last forever if if the fees kind of continue to, to go up or the consumer starts to feel a pinch. Uh, but you know, so far um, so good on that front. You know, I'd say one thing I think mitigating the upward pressure on costs from some of these higher um, kind of regulatory right. burdens is is just what's happening in the labor market and the fact that you know there, there are people out more people out there looking for gig work and 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 that's you know you know coming to places like Uber and Lyft to uh, you know to find earnings opportunities. Hey, hey, Tom, let's pivot to Lyft and look ahead of their, to their earnings. Big picture question. Does Lyft ever stand a chance if it doesn't move into delivery? Yeah, look, I, I think that the, the market uh, is large enough uh, when I'm, we're talking about uh, ride sharing, mobility as a service, to support uh, you know, two large players. Uh, I, I think uh, what you'll look at, though, is a significantly smaller business, uh, lower margins, um, you know, it's really going to require Lyft to differentiate on on the thing that it talked about kind of during its IPO roadshow, and and uh, and that's its brand. Um, you know, it, it really had um, pre-pandemic great kind of brand metrics, brand awareness, particularly with the younger younger people. It was sort of the kinder, gentler ride-sharing mm-hmm. company. Um, you know, that helped it uh, not have to go out and acquire customers as aggressively. Um, so, look, I, I think Lyft. Um, you know, can be a number two, but, you know, it's increasingly looking like it's going to be sort of a distant number two.